all gas, mining, all gold equities, it's time to get prepared. Thorsten, we have uh, just uh, spoken about uh, crude oil and uh, I think now it's time also to talk about, uh, yeah, not, not only about the underlying commodities, but I think, uh, yeah, let's talk about oil and gas companies. Are they still cheap or are they expensive? What's up there? Yeah, the interesting thing uh, often is that oil and gas companies never been cheap. Uh, also mm -hmm. in the process we've seen uh, prices, oil prices drop to uh, $26 uh, beginning of 2016 and also gas uh, prices in the US, uh, Henry Hub uh, dropped to 180 uh, prices we haven't seen uh, 20 years uh, before. Uh, we have seen prices five, six dollars. So therefore you would imply that energy uh, companies uh, react the negative to that and become a bargain uh, and a good buy for, pri uh, for a price recovery. Well, what I did in the following chart, what you see here, is uh, I showed you that uh, the ratio uh, oil and gas companies, so their uh, exchange uh, value uh, against uh, energy prices, so the prices of oil and gas, is still at a very high level, meaning they're still expensive and never been cheap. Wow, <laughs> even they're paying high dividends, like a Royal Dutch, I think with now seven, eight percent and something, and some of uh, yeah, good uh, Canadian uh, oil companies paying like whatever, half a percent per month. Yeah, obviously also there's a reason uh, companies are expensive and staying expensive. Um, uh, the punchline here is uh, that they don't come at a bargain. Um, the reason why oil and gas companies uh, haven't uh, been impacted that hard, for example, like the metal and mining sector, mm -hmm. um, is the following. You have, uh, for example, hedging uh, possibilities um, for the companies, so they can hedge their production for the next one, two years mm -hmm. uh, because of the high liquidity of a crude uh, future market. Mm -hmm. And the second is refining business. So refining is uh, normally uh, uh, a good hedge uh, for the company who is doing uh, exploration development. Mm -hmm. Okay, metals and mining, you mentioned it already, let's talk about but, uh, yeah, metals in mining, of course, because uh, yeah, base metals, copper, for example, is uh, very important in the world and the price uh, is still low. Uh, iron ore, copper, alley. Uh, I did the same systematic uh, thought, uh, looking at the companies uh, like BHP, Rio, uh, Vale as a big uh, iron copper guys, but also Freeport or First Quantum, uh, divided the market capitalization um, to, uh, to the prices of industrial metal as an index, so copper prices, alley prices, mm -hmm. and what you see here is uh, Industrial metals price had a, uh, had a bad time as well, but not as bad as the oil price uh, moving down to $26. But what you see in the ratio, that the companies uh, from the market capitalization have been punished too much for the price in the industrial metals. So therefore, there is a real margin on the mining side that uh, the companies come as a discount in regard uh, to, to physical metal prices. So that makes it attractive as a sector from a value perspective. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, uh, of course, base metals uh, have, have been hammered, that's for sure. But also, I think uh, I would say gold and silver has been hammered too. Uh, so what's up in the gold and silver space? Is gold mining cheap now? Yeah, maybe from the investor's point of view, uh, the base metals are a bit out of favor in terms of lagging demand from China. I think this is overstated uh, from the general theme, uh, so there's still value in that sector. On the gold mining, gold miners had a fantastic run, also the silver guys in the first quarter. Uh, what uh, you see is here in the chart, it's only a small bip in the last 15 years yeah. uh, in regard to the metal prices. Yeah. So the prices came under pressure. Uh, companies uh, even uh, e decreased uh, by much more because of the gold and silver companies, uh, the big guys uh, like the Newmont, Gold Corp, uh, and barracks uh, of this world, but also the smaller guys. Um, mm -hmm. Endeavor, Klondex, whatever. On the, uh, on the gold side, on the silver side, like a Mac, Endeavor. Uh, they come under pressure as uh, there is no tomorrow, as the gold price is uh, um, going to 800 and sub below, 500, uh, and the silver price moving down to, to 10, uh, 8 to 10 dollars again. So therefore, these companies uh, will be bankrupt. And now you see like the first catch up, uh, it's a way back to reality, uh, but there's still much room to the upside if metal prices stay at these levels uh, where they are, they don't have to increase. Mm -hmm, fantastic. Um, let's let's stay with the gold mining. Uh, what what is the long term picture? I mean, you just said it. We have we had like a breather in the f in Q1, but uh, if we compare it to long term to the long term cycles, we are still very very low and still at the bottom, right? Yeah, looking at the last twenty years, for example, uh, looking at uh, gold uh, mining indices like Philadelphia Gold and Silver, for example, or like the MX uh, Gold Bucks Index, uh, comparing this with a gold price, we have this craziness at the beginning of the year. Uh, that the gold mines as a total, so uh, summing up all the gold mines in terms of the market value, uh, traded at the same level uh, as uh, would imply a gold price of 270 bucks. 
and we are traded at this time at uh, up uh, 1200 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you would assume that gold companies are not the most efficient companies uh, out there in the, in the uh, corporate industry, yeah. but they're not that inefficient in terms of uh, uh, G&A, for example. So looking at this valuation, it was so crazy. Comparing the, the first quarter of 2016, uh, the average was up uh, by 50%, so 50% sounds a lot. Looking at the chart again, uh, you see that this is like the first glimpse. Mm -hmm. So from investor's point of view, you don't want to buy something that's just uh, uh, run up by 50%. Uh, but if you compare the longer term picture, probably it's uh, just a tactic to wait uh, for an interesting uh, entry point, as there's well like a, a tripling and quadrupling possible to just gain the average rate uh, back uh, from the last 20 years. Mm -hmm, definitely. So that means it's uh, time to move into mining equities. Tactic, wait, but uh, strategic, uh, to make the strategic step, uh, the tide has turned on commodities and also on the mining uh, industry, you have to get in there. Perfect. Thorsten, thank you very much. Very interesting. <laughs> thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Dr. Thorsten Delin, the Chief Strategist of uh, Tiberius uh, Asset Management out of Zug. And uh, yeah, you heard it. It is uh, time to take care about mining equities. Uh, and as he said, uh, strategically, definitely you, have to need, you, you need to have a look on. Uh, but tactically, maybe you should wait a little bit uh, down tick and then really go into it. I'm your host, Jochen Steiger from Commodity TV. Thanks for watching us in partnership with Dukas Copy TV. Bye bye from Geneva.